Hello friends, this video on waves part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 19 before going ahead with part 20. Now we will talk about the position of nodes and antinodes in case of a system which is closed at both ends. What do we mean when, when I say it is closed at both ends? That means both the ends are rigid boundaries. That means at both the ends, nodes will be formed, right? Wherever you have a rigid boundary, that means there is there no displacement can take place at that particular boundary. So at the boundary, you will always have amplitude is equal to zero. So whenever I talk of a closed boundary, a node is formed at the closed boundary. So here in this case, what happens? If you look at this figure, you can see that both the ends are closed. This is one end and this is the other end, right? So nodes will be formed at both the ends. So this is a node. This is again a node. So nodes will be formed at both the ends. Now it says that standing waves on a string of length L fixed at both ends have restricted wavelengths. What do we mean by restricted wavelengths? That means a standing wave cannot have just any value of wavelength if it is fixed at both ends. It can only have certain values of wavelength. That means the wave will vibrate in for certain specific values of wavelength. So what determines those specific values of wavelengths which a standing wave fixed at both ends can have. So that only we will see here. Now as I told you just now that at ends, at both ends, at ends, nodes will be formed, right? So nodes will be formed implies that the amplitude will be equal to zero, right? Now let us consider that, let us say this is our, this is a string. Okay, let us say this is a string. So this end is x is equal to 0 if x defines the position. And this end will be x is equal to L. If I consider that we have a string of length L. Okay? So here we are considering I have a string of length L which is fixed at both the ends. So when it vibrates, standing waves are formed because of the superposition of the incident wave and the reflected wave. Now these standing waves will have nodes at both the fixed ends, right? That is at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L. Now we also know that the condition for formation of node, nodes, formation of nodes is given by x is equal to n lambda by 2, right? This is the condition for formation of nodes. That means this condition holds true for x is equal to 0 as well as x is equal to L. So that means when x is equal to L, this condition becomes L is equal to n lambda by 2, right? So from this we can say L, so from this we can say that lambda is equal to 2L by n. Now what is this n here? n is nothing but n is a, any natural number which can take any number from 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay. So, so you can see here that lambda cannot take just any value. It can only take values which satisfy this condition. That is why it is said that standing waves on a string which is fixed at both ends have restricted wavelengths. So this is the expression which defines the restriction. So wavelength cannot take any other value other than a value which satisfies this condition of 2L by N where n is any number starting from 1, right? So now if this is the value of lambda that is wavelength, so there if wavelengths are restricted that means frequency will also be restricted because wavelength and frequency are very closely related to each other. So what would be the corresponding frequencies? So now let us have a look at that. So the corresponding frequencies for this motion that is nu will be equal to how is frequency and wavelength related frequency is equal to v by lambda so we can say that frequency nu will be equal to v into n divided by 2n so this gives the values of 
the various frequencies which the standing wave can have. Now what is this V? This V is nothing but the velocity or speed of the traveling waves. So this represents the speed of the traveling wave. You remember right? What is this traveling wave? These are the traveling waves which combine and form the standing wave. Right? So this frequency is also restricted. So that means the string when it oscillates, it can only have these values of frequencies and nothing other than this. So now we will look at the very, this new, that is these corresponding frequencies are known as natural frequencies or they are also termed as modes of oscillation because these frequencies basically tell us different types of oscillation or different modes in which the string can oscillate when it is fixed at both ends. So we will see what are the different modes of oscillation now. So now let us see the modes of oscillation. So what are the different modes? by which the system can oscillate. As I told you, just now in the previous slide, we found out the natural frequency or the frequency which will define the modes of oscillation. So what was that natural frequency? That natural frequency is given by nu is equal to Vn divided by 2L, where V is the speed of the traveling wave L is the length of the string and N is any number which can take values from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So for N is equal to 1, the mode of oscillation is known as fundamental mode. So fundamental no mode refers to the mode of oscillation when N is equal to 1. So therefore in the fundamental mode, what is the frequency? The frequency is denoted by nu1 and frequency is equal to v divided by 2l. So this is the oscillation mode corresponding to the lowest frequency. So if you look at the expression of frequency, this is the lowest possible value of frequency because the value of n cannot be less than 1. So n is equal to 1 is the lowest possible value of n and therefore nu1 is the lowest possible mode of the Frequency. So this is known as first harmonic or fundamental mode. Then comes the second harmonic. Now before we go to the second harmonic, let us look at the first harmonic diagrammatically. So when I talk of first harmonic that is n is equal to 1, we say that it looks somewhat like this. These are the two ends which are fixed. One node is formed here, the other node is formed here. And we just have this one oscillation. This is the fu fundamental mode or first harmonic oscillation. Now when I talk of the second harmonic, it corresponds to n is equal to 2. So in this case, the frequency in case of second harmonic is denoted by nu 2 and this is equal to 2v divided by 2l or that is equal to v by l. So this is the frequency corresponding, corresponding to the second harmonic oscillation mode. So in this case, how would it look like? These are the two fixed ends. So it would look like something like this. Two nodes are formed at the ends. And then it is, it will look somewhat like this. So there are a total of three nodes. So here three nodes are formed and two antinodes. And in the previous figure, it was two nodes and one antinode, right? So this is second harmonic. Similarly, when I talk of third harmonic, it corresponds to n is equal to 3. So in this case, again, the frequency becomes nu 3, which is equal to 3v divided by 2l. So this corresponds to the third harmonic. So in this, it looks like something like, this. So you have nodes at all these points and antinodes at all these points. Right? So these are the different nodes, these are the different modes of oscillation in case of, of standing waves in a system which is closed at both the ends. Now we will look at a system which is closed at one end but open at the other end. So we will look at 
that system. Now, once we discuss that system as well, we will have a comparison of all the systems. Okay. So now from this, you can see that the frequency or the wavelengths in case of uh, standing wave for both ends fixed can only have restricted values. Now let us go ahead and look at these diagrams which represents what I, draw, which, what I drew just now. See the first line, it represents the first harmonic. So this animation will clearly tell you how it actually happens. When it is a standing wave, this is how it will move, right? So this is our first harmonic. When I talk of the second harmonic, then, then, then it is represented by the second figure, right? So this is what I have represented here. Similarly, the third harmonic represented by this figure. And the last one, that is the fourth harmonic. Clear? Okay. So now, thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.